Like how you did the MatPat style of animation. Hey, I really appreciate that. While I wasn't trying to follow a specific style, it still means a lot. Honestly, this looks like the animation in a game theory video with the eyes and the images, and that's so cool. Again, kinda not what I was going for, but nonetheless, I still appreciate your input. Hey, I've seen this art style before. But hey. Sorry, what? Hello, internet. Welcome to game theory. What? What the? F this style of animation is just crazy. Crazy. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. How do you do the game theory animation you're doing in your video? Because it's so good. Could you do a video on something or how to do it? You know what? That's a good idea. Hi Mark, how's it going? Pretty good. I have been animating for a long time. For at least as long as a little over a year. I've learned a ton of practical skills, effects, writing, storyboarding, all that kind of stuff. But, but in that period of time, I may or may not have borrowed, taken inspiration, some animating techniques. But yeah, in actuality, my animation style looks a lot like MatPat's and Doug Doug's. Honestly, going through the journey learning Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and After Effects, you kind of pick up things and watch how other animators animate their style, and you kind of visualize what they're doing in their workspace. For me, after learning After Effects a little while, I saw some other YouTubers, for example, MatPat. I saw how he was animating his videos, and I thought, that's not too difficult to replicate. So I replicated it and managed to figure out how he animates his style. Honestly, understanding the whole process of how he animates is not too difficult to learn. It's just very time consuming. All it has is three main distinctive features. Character poses, hmm. the eyes, hmm. and the wobble. Hmm. The character poses often use express more or less some kind of emotion, like how MatPat uses a pinpoint to express whether he's happy or sad or angry. Same thing with Doug Doug, he creates characters based off different fruits or vegetables. And by adding the eyes, it makes the emotion more exaggerated. It adds a level of detail that makes it more entertaining and fun to watch. And then finally, for MatPat's case, he adds the wobble. And if you look at any of my other works like this, this, that, some of this, I could say, respectively, I know a little bit what I'm talking about, but I'm gonna be showing a complete step-by-step -step how to make your characters, how to make the eyes, and how to animate it all through various Adobe products. Anyways, let's start with character poses. Now, the first thing you'll need is a nice pair of clothes, preferably something that probably goes along with your brand or the character you made. In my case, I picked a black and white suit with a vest and tie, spending maybe too much time trying to figure out how to tie. Like, I mean, seriously, it took me three or four times before finally just Googling it, even though I did it five minutes earlier before recording just to see if I could. I don't know. Anyways, just make sure you're all dressed up nice, sharp, and handsome. Good job, Mark. Nice outfit. Next, you're gonna find an open spot where you can stand and then set up some good lighting. Move your camera to about mid height and then press record. Then record yourself doing some character poses. It can be like an arms crossed, a power pose, thumbs up, whatever you want, more the merrier. Alternate between the poses because the first one might not come out as great on camera and do this as many times as you need. Now, when you're taking the poses, make sure you're keeping your head centered and your eyes forward at all times. Even on poses when you're pointing up or to the side, just face forward the whole time. It will make the editing process easier. Now get that recording of yourself and import it into Premiere Pro. Pause it at a specific pose you like. Press this button and it will import that frame into your photos. Name it pose one and number them accordingly. Keep doing this until you get all the poses you like and scroll the bar at the top just to watch yourself do a little dance. I ended up with 26, but you can do more or less. Next, import those images to Photoshop. Open a file and use the resolution size 1920 by 1080 long ways. You can do whatever one you want, but this is just my preference. But you're gonna wanna cut your poses away from the background. I recommend using the pen tool. You can be a lot more specific with the details and the edges, but use what's ever best for you. To use it, press P on the keyboard and start clicking. You'll notice two things when you use the pen tool. You'll notice the anchor points 
and the regular points. To move the anchor point, you want to hold Alt, then click on it and drag. The anchor point will affect how the line curves. To move a previous point, you press Control and do the same thing. Do this until you've made a full selection in which the line turns a complete blue. You're going to go to the tab in the bottom right and hit Pads. Click on Worked Pads while holding Control. The blue line will turn into a black and white moving line. Then you're going to add some touch-ups. Press the lasso tool at the top left and click select and mask. We're going to feather the edges by about 0.2 or 0.4 and shift the edges by about negative 30 to negative 20. It's so that we can cover up some of the background we get from the edges. Next hit refine hair. Then hit the button with a circle and a square around it. We're adding a layer mask. There, you've made a selection. Now you'll notice some of your hair is probably messed up like mine did here, so you'll need to fill it in with a brush tool. Make sure you have the layer mask selected and then hit B for brush. You'll notice that the colors on your left will change to black and white. We're going to be editing that layer mask. Essentially, what a layer mask does is it covers different parts of an image that you want to hide or show. It's a way of deleting layers without being so destructive. Having white shows the image and having black hides. Gray kind of does something in the middle. Press X on the keyboard to switch between them to draw on the layer mask. You can also change the brush type at the top left. I usually just choose one of two hard and soft edges. Then to edit the size of your brush, hold Alt and drag your mouse while holding right click. Then clean up your hair to make yourself look a little nicer. See? There! Look how handsome you are! You can also do this on other edges where the background is bleeding through. Finally, you can do some extra things to make your character look nicer. What I did, which is optional, was I added a hue and saturation layer and turned down the saturation all the way down. Then I edited a layer mask to only affect the suit. I did this so the suit could look nicer and cleaner and it would just be straight black and white. See? Nice and clean. And there you go. You have the basics of making a pose. Honestly, pat yourself on the back. You did a pretty good job. However, you still got 25 other poses you still have to make, and the last one took you about 30 minutes to make. And if you know some math, you know that's way too fucking long. So sit down, get yourself a cup of coffee, and listen to your classical music for studying playlist because it's going to be a long couple of hours. Perfect. After that, you got all your poses done. All 26 of your handsome little guys right there. The final step is to line up all the poses together. This one is really important. Hide all the poses except the first two and get the top one's opacity down to around 50%. Then move the top layer until all the eyes are lined up in the same place or as close as you can make it. Then do this again with all the other layers. Turn on the visibility of all of them and make sure it looks level. Export each one, one at a time, and make sure you give it the appropriate names, such as arms crossed, arms side, fingers up, thumbs up, family guy pose, and you're done. Hey, it's me, a week from the future. I'm recording this because the audio sucked. Next, what we're doing after is we're creating a set of eyes. Preferably, what would be better for you to use is Adobe Illustrator. However, I don't really know how to use the program. So we're just gonna go back in Photoshop and I'm just gonna show you how to create a set of eyes in under 30 seconds or as fast as possible. And get the shape tool and make a circle. Fill it in black, copy and paste, make it white. Make it smaller, copy it one more time, make it even smaller, make it black. Copy the whole thing, move it over, hide the two small black circles, export it, call it eyes. Hide everything but the two small black circles, export it, call them pupils. And you're done. I don't know, I just wanted to clap. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, it's really not that complicated. I mean, it's just a couple of circles. However, you can edit these circles to give a bit more emotion if you wanted to. I have a handful that I use. I have about, I think, eight, and they are, hold on, let me, uh, let me read my script. They are anger, sadness, disappointment, happiness, shock, squinting, and questioning, as well as the normal stare. You could, if you wanted to, get away with three and people would be just fine with it. Just for me, I like the more variation. And honestly, you don't have to be that complicated with the eyes. You could make three little circles. If you're an artist, you can definitely enhance this style. But the bare bones you need is just a set of eyes and a 
set of pupils. Now, what you've been kind of been waiting for, the meat and potatoes of this whole video, uh, how to animate it. Whoa. But the programs you're gonna be needing for it is Premiere Pro and After Effects, more heavily in favor of the After Effects part. You don't need Premiere Pro, but it makes the whole process way easier, way more organized, and way simpler. And let's get started right now. Start by recording yourself some audio. Man, I hate the rain. That'll work. Now what I actually do for my workspace is I actually link After Effects to Premiere Pro. Usually it's because when I'm animating, there are generally multiple scenes that I have to animate and I want a space to connect them all. Drag your audio on the timeline and then press import into After Effects. So it'll open up a tab in After Effects where you can start animating. The first thing you'll need is a background that you want to animate over. I decided to create a rainy nighttime city aesthetic with some glow. I created some buildings by masking out some gradients and then spacing them apart. I added a guardrail and added some glow with the paintbrush tool to make it a little more atmospheric. Then I spaced out the layers to give it some dimension to it. I'm pretty much making a parallax scene. You don't have to make it this complicated. It can be as simple as a white background if you wanted to. But I wanted to try some new things out and it's been a little bit since I last animated. If you guys want, I can make a full parallaxing tutorial in the future. Just let me know. But anyway, here's the completed background. Next, you'll need to import one set of eyes, pupils, and a character pose. Hold shift while selecting both the eyes and the pupils, then right click to open the menu. Hit pre-compose to create a new composition and rename it Eyes01. The reason behind 01 is because if you're making, say, a 15 minute YouTube video, you probably are gonna be using multiple different pre-comps of eyes. Next, scale the eyes by pressing S on your keyboard and position them with P, and align them up with your character. You can press R if you need to affect the rotation too. Finally, pre-compose it again with the eye pre-comp and the character you have. You can name it either Character01, Person01, but since it's me, I usually just name it at me 01. Select the anchor point tool at the top left or press Y on the keyboard. Then move the anchor point down below the waist where you'll be rotating the character. Scale it up and adjust it to make it fit the scene. Next, open your audio file and open waveform. Basically, all we're doing is lining up the rotation with the audio spikes. To affect the rotation of your character, press R on the keyboard and press the stopwatch button. Line up where the audio spike is and then click the keyframe button. Then, move a couple of frames over and change the rotation. This adds the slight movement we need for our character, and feel free to adjust it if it's not to your liking. Do this for the rest of the audio file you wish to animate. Once you are finished, you can start changing the poses in the eyes. If you Double click on your character pre-comp, it will actually open up. Go back to your main comp and then line up your cursor thing with the start of the rotation keyframe. And without moving it, tap back to your character pre-comp. Then drag the second pose you want to add to it. All we are doing now is changing the opacity of the two poses. With your second pose selected, press T to open the opacity and turn it all the way down. Then add a keyframe to your first pose with the opacity at 100%. Then one frame later, add a keyframe to both, but switch their opacities. That's basically the whole process. You do the exact thing with every other rotation in the main composition. Once that's finally done, you open up Eyes01 and do the exact same thing you did with the poses. Finally head back to the main composition where you're going to use a plugin. By the way, you need to use a plugin. It's called Easy Inertia. I put in the description a YouTube video where you can download it, but this is basically all that it does. It creates a wobble. Once you have it downloaded, you can open it up at the Windows tab above, and you can find it all the way down at the bottom. Have the layer you want the wobble to affect selected, and then have the layer button checked. Select which settings you want to have the wobble effect. For our case, it's rotation. Press the check bar and press apply and watch your little wobble. Now, I usually like to turn down my wobble so it's not so much in my face. I like to make it a lot more subtle. I also usually like to combine my character animations with a variety of easy eases. Generally, I only have the wobble affect the rotation and sometimes the scale. Finally, I just add some touch-ups to my animation to look nicer and this is what the final product should look like. Man, I hate the rain and I hate the homeless. But when you put them together though, Nothing beats that. Finally, you know the steps of how to animate like MatPat and Doug Doug. So that's about it. So yeah. Oi, are you recording? Oh yeah, I'm recording. Recording the new video. But controversies between MatPat and fucking Doug Doug.